Hello chaps and chapits and welcome to another Board Games Everybody Should do, 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 A board game series where I pick up a board game I go through the rules and show you how to play it And then I don't just give you one review I give you two reviews The first review is a technical review about the components And what you're getting for your money And the mechanisms and how it all fits together the second review is more of a personal review, how I feel about the game and the gaming experiences that I've had with it. And then I leave it up to you to decide whether the game is for your collection or not. Okay, so what game are we looking at today? We are looking at Blackwood. Q Thunder. Blackwood is an amazing, immense, part of woodland which has these magical ingredients which grow therefore witches have set up their village right next door the council of this village blackwood has a vacant seat for a new witch to take up but to get that they need to get reputation and to get the reputation they need to make some magical potions and to make those magical potions they need to venture into blackwood itself to collect them the witch that at the end of the game makes the most potions and has the most reputation will get their seat on the board and Blackwood. <laughs> well, they're not really evil witches, are they? They're quite nice witches, kind of like Harry Potter witches. Hmm, maybe should do a different voice. This is Blackwood, this is where witches live. La, 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 la. Each player, or in this case witch, will take three marionettes of their colour and eight money. They will also, if they wish to, have two reference cards to help them. In the middle of the table, you'll place the village, which is situated next to Blackwood. You'll also take the round marker and place it on the number one. And as you can see, there will be three rounds. Next to the village of Blackwood, you'll put Blackwood itself. And then next to that, you'll place the hiding place of Fagus Bok. Next, we're going to create the forest with this deck of forest cards. These forest cards have ingredients on them and values. You will shuffle this deck and then you will place out a number of rows of five, depending on the numbers of players, plus one. So, in a two-player game, you're going to place out three rows of five. So obviously, in a four-player game, there'd be five rows of five. There are six different spell cards, and you will place all six of these spell cards out, but you will place a number of these cards depending on the number of players. Spell cards are the number of players minus one, so in a two-player game, you only place one card of each spell. Whereas in a four-player game, it'd be three of each spell next up there is a deck of potion cards you will shuffle these and then deal out always six potions for everyone to make and then you place this deck next to the board then you will need to place the forest tracker on the left hand side of the forest because in each round your marionettes are going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the forest of blackwood and the very last thing you do is you place the Fagus Bok tokens in his hiding place. You're also going to need to designate one of the witches to be the starting player. And now you're ready to play. Gameplay is very, very simple. As a witch, you're going to be sending one of your marionettes out into the forest to go and collect ingredients. And then they will bring that ingredients back. And then 
the forest tracker will move and you'll send another marionette out into and you'll do this five times before going to the next round and then it resets and you start again simple huh but well, actually there's a bit more to it than that so starting with the first witch player they will place one of their marionettes into the forest this will go around the table clockwise until each player has placed one of their marionettes once this is done, we will decide now who's going to be the first witch player for the next round. This is quite a simple case of looking where the forest tracker is and then following the line and the marionette at the end is the player that is going to become the first player for the next round. Then the marionettes will come back with the ingredients that they've collected. You start always with the line of the forest tracker and you start at the closest so there's nobody on this card, but there is the orange witch here. Now, they can collect this card, but to do so they would need to pay the cost of two money. And then they can keep this card in front of them. If they wish not to pay or they can't pay, this card just goes into a discard pile. Now Blackwood is not a magical forest for nothing. What happens as soon as a marionette comes back? The hole gets covered over as all of these ingredients slide over. It then moves to the next player who's closest to the forest tracker, which is the white witch player. So they either pay for their ingredient or don't pay for it, up to them. And then the forest moves. And guess what? Now it's the turn of the purple witch and they can collect their ingredients and then the forest moves. And then finally, it'll be the black witch. And then the forest moves. Once all marionettes have been collected from the row of the forest tracker, you will replace any cards in the forest in the same order always from left to right from bottom to top and then the forest tracker advances to the next row and then you start with the next first player which in this case will be black also after the forest tracker has moved if there are less than six potions available you will fill up until there are six available Every player places out one of their marionettes. You then decide who's going to be the starting marionette for the next round, or the starting player, which is going to be, in this case, the white player, because they're in line with the forest tracker and they're the furthest away. You then collect the ingredients. So the purple witch will collect this one here. Cards move over. And then finally, the white witch will collect the ingredients there and the forest moves over. Now, as you can see, the orange witch and the black witch still have a marionette in the forest. But not to fret, you will collect these later on as this round tracker, forest tracker moves to the next row, which means that the orange marionette can then collect their ingredients and then the black one will have to wait until the second round. Some of the additional actions that you can do on your turn are these. You can create a potion. When you collect one of your marionettes with some ingredients, you can then create a potion. You match up the ingredients with one of the potions. So in this case, two toads and a four-leaf clover. On these two cards, I have two toads and a four-leaf clover. I pay these cards to get this potion. Now this potion will give me three points and it'll also give me three money. As you can see, I totally wasted the mushroom on this card, which is a shame. But the thing is, the good thing is, if you had several other ingredients cards, you could concoct two potions or more with all the ingredients that are on the cards. You can split the ingredients, so I could have split them, and then I could have used the other ingredients there to create another potion. You can, if you wish, go and visit the great magician Tappy Mocket and exchange some of your potions for a magic spell. To do this, you take the spell which corresponds with the potions that you wish to transform or give to Mr. Tappy Mocket. So in this case, a green potion and a red potion. You then flip these cards over. And as you can see, you won't lose your points, but uh, this just marks that the potions have been used. You will also have to pay two money for the first spell. 
If you buy a second spell later on, you will have to pay three money instead. And the third spell will cost you four, etc, etc. On your turn, when you're collecting a marionette or putting a marionette out onto the board, you can cast one of your spells. This spell, when the marionette returns with the ingredients, will let you take it for free. This spell here will let you move another player to another card of their choice, but they will be compensated with two money. This spell will let you swap two forest cards in the forest. Again, nobody's allowed to be on those two cards, so uh, be careful, please. We have a spell which lets you add an ingredient of your choice, kind of like a joker. This one here lets you take five cards from the forest deck. You get to keep one and pay only half price for it. And finally, this one here will let you place a second marionette out on the same turn that you're placing one out. To use a spell, you just basically flip the card over and it stays flipped over until the end of the exploration round. Once the forest tracker goes from the fifth position back to the first, you flip it back and can use it again this round. If you find yourself running low on funds, you can sell one of your potions. To do so, you flip the potion card over and you turn it upside down. As you can see, I did have three points with this red potion. I now only have one point. I add this to my fricassee, but it also gives me the three money which I need because I am short of funds. Another way to get money, and this is if you're really flat broke and you have two or less money in your reserve, you can go and visit Fagus Book, who will give you a loan of five money. But at the end of the game, he's going to give you minus five reputation points. After the fifth round, you'll move the forest tracker back to its starting position on the far left and you'll advance the expedition tracker to the next round. If players have any ingredients left over, they will have to get rid of them because they will go off, they will go bad. The good thing is you will be compensated at half the price for the value. So for these two here, I would get two coins. If I only had this card here, I would only get one coin because three divided by two is not possible, but you round down to one. These cards then go into the discard pile. When you're on the third expedition and the forest tracker is in the, the fifth space, this will signify the end of the game. You'll count up all your reputation points from the potions that you've used and also the potions that you haven't used. You'll also get one point for every three money. So in this case, there's six there, so I would get two points. And then you would deduct off five points for each loan that you got from Fagus Buck. The player or the witch with the most reputation has been promoted to the board of Blackwood. So I'm going to start off with the technical review. What are you getting for your money? We'll start with the components. Now you've got a bucket load of cards and they are all good quality thick cards which will last a good amount of time again I love the the coins they're a good thickness they don't feel weebly wobbly and they don't fall down you've got this lovely board this board which just says Blackwood but it's actually the forest board everything is nice and how sweet are these min meeple marionettes they're so sweet they're so cool um, so components wise small box it's a small box game nice interior it doesn't hold everything everything goes in baggies but hey ho the overall art of everything is really really nice whimsical kind of magical kid story kind of sorcery story kind of roll doll ish um, and which is really, really nice and adorable. The only problem is that you will have trouble finding the information that you need because it's all very dark card art and, and trying to find all the information, it could have been clearer, it could have been a bit more brighter and a bit more poppier, maybe on a bar at the bottom, color coded, something like that, just so for the ingredients cards from the forest and also for the spell cards, you do spend a lot of time looking really hard to try to see the information that you need. 
again talking about seeing information the Fagus book tokens could have been cards instead of these small tokens uh, the information on them is very small but once you know where they are yeah they, they, they serve their purpose it's just a token that you put in front of yourself but I don't know they could have been cards bigger cards like the same kind of size of this Next we jump to the rule book. The rule book does a good job of explaining how the game plays. Uh, little disclaimer, I did do the translation for the English version and uh, while I was translating I did uh, point out to the publisher that th this section needed to be extended a bit and a bit more depth but they said no. Uh, but as I said when you read it, for me personally I've played the game quite a few times as a prototype, it all made sense. Uh, one thing that didn't make sense is this little bit it could have been put in order properly. It tells you that there's the forest exploration and then return to the village, but then it tells you the first witch, so the first player for the next round. It should have been in the middle of these two instead of next two. Mm, apart from that, it's a very good rule book. As I said, you read it and you will understand how the game plays. Player aids, very useful. Two small cards which sit next to you and remind you of what you can do on your turn and how the rounds work also all the spells what they do so very useful very practical and of course nice big chunky first player marker and forest tracker marker now let's talk about the mechanics the mechanics are worker placement and resource management of sorts you're going to be placing your your people out onto the forest uh, to go and get the ingredients that you want and using that ingredients economically to make the potions to get you points which you could then use the potions to buy spells the game is balanced in that way you could um, go out and buy lots of spells which gives you lots of different special abilities um, which is a very nice thing but the more spells that you buy the more expensive it gets and money is a very tight resource in this game um, you may find after your first one or two plays that you're going to need to visit Fagus Bock or sell some potions to get some income. The game is very backstabby, um, it's very tight in that way. Uh, players are going to be fighting over ingredients and potions and then they're going to be fighting over the spells because there is one less than there is players and some of the spells are very strong um, and evidently uh, the, the, for instance getting a, a ingredients card for nothing paying nothing for it is very strong as well as the joker wild is very strong some of the other ones are not too bad um moving a player from one space so you can take their space but they get two money is a kind of nasty but nice kind of backstabby thing to do um but uh, as i said the game feels tight euro style work placement and as I said, you're managing your resources and trying not to be at the end of the uh, exploration phase, have too many ingredients that you're gonna lose them and, and get a little bit more money back. As a whole, as a product, my technical review would give this be a, give this would give this would be a game if it would be a woodchuck in a wood, chucking woods if a bear could hear a tree falling. Um, the, 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 Technically, this game is very solid, it's very well produced, um, and it's a solid 9 out of 10. But that's my technical review. So before I give you my personal review, I have to do a little disclaimer. Yes, I have worked a little bit on this project, and also I am a very good friend of the designer of this game, and I am a friend of the editor of this game as well. I'm probably not going to be a friend of his for much longer. Um, hey ho um blackwood is a board game that every voldemort would love to play against harry potter with yes this game is a nasty version of splendor now splendor if you don't know is one of my favorite games it's a it's a resource management game where you're taking resources to get other resources and you have to do it in a speed time to get to the maximum points this is slightly different it's the same thing you're getting resources but you're placing out workers to get those resources and then the really sweet thing is the forest it moves when players take their ingredients which is plays into the strategy of the game which makes it an interesting thing and it stands out and again it is a race because players want 
those ingredients to finish those potions. Everyone can see all those potions. And some of those potions are quite easy to make. Some of those potions are quite hard to make. And if you watch all the players and what ingredients they have, you can kind of deduct which potion they're going for. So going for that first player marker is essential to get the ingredients you want and also to take the potion before someone else can make it, giving you big points or small points or the, the ability to buy a certain spell in front of it, you know, to take it away from someone. And again, that's a nasty thing to do as well. You can buy all of the same spell. And so nobody else has can, can do the Joker or no one else can put two um, marionettes into the forest on a turn. It's a nasty game. Again, this game is a big brain burner because there is a lot of information out on the table. If you're playing a four player game, you're gonna have a five by five grid of ingredients and taking all of that in, and as I said, um, it's sometimes a bit hard to see due to the fact that the art is dark and you, you can't see certain things and then matching it up with the spells. Um, this game made me very AP. I've never played a game and wanted to win and spend so long on my turn. I'm normally a person that goes, okay, I'm going to do this on my turn. And then it goes around the table and by the time it gets back to me, I've had two or three ideas of what I'm going to do on my next turn. So when it comes to me, I play this game. It, always in the third exploration round, it is a real struggle to get the things that I want to give me the maximum points to let me win this game. And that's when the game kind of chogged up for me personally because I was doing the APing and I hated myself for it. Um, it really, really is, you, you have to do so many calculations because there are so many different ingredients and you're thinking, okay, if I go for this one now, then I can go for that one later, or should I go for that one now? Because this one there is gonna move and they're going for that one and, ooh, it is, it is a, a big brain burner. This is a medium weight to heavy Euro game in a small box with cute artwork. Does that appeal to you? <laughs> As I said in the technical review, this game is very tight. The money resources that you need to buy the ingredients, you're gonna find yourself struggling on your first game. Um, and then, you know, having to get a loan or having to sell a potion just to get a bit of money to finance the spell. There's no, there's not much leeway for you to just go and get the ingredients there and get a few ingredients there and get a few ingredients there and go, okay, what potion can I make now? It is a case of you have to get that ingredient, then you have to get that ingredient and you have to make a potion with it. And then you get that ingredient and that ingredient and you have to make a potion because the potions will give you back the money. And so, as I said, the game is very, very stringent on the things that you can do. It is a case of you have to be careful and um, and think about what you're going to get. Because if you pick up the wrong ingredients or someone buys a potion that you were aiming for, you're going to be screwed or you're going to lose out on money or victory points. And that that can hurt on a personal level and on a gaming level. So is Blackwood my cup of tea, my potion explosion? Is it my Black Witch project of games? It's a game that I can take or leave. It's, it's a bit too nasty for me. As I said, I prefer Splendor. It's a lot more lighter. There's a lot more leeway. You've got a lot more possibilities to, on your turn. Uh, whereas, in, and again, the, the, the information is a little bit more restricted. This is very, very big, but you have to be, you have to narrow in on your strategies pretty quickly. Um, and I find it, I find it a struggle. So it's not really my cup of tea. It's a game that I don't mind playing, but it's, it's not the best game of this kind of ilk for me. Uh, sorry, Philip. But, um, if you like big brain burnery games and you like being nasty to other players and stealing stuff away from them as they're about to do something, you know, <laughs> this could be a game for you. So um, I would say look out for Blackwood and my personal BGG score is a 7.5. If I do a combined score, I am going to have to run over to the computer and do a calculation of, unless you can do it now, 
I'll, I'll do it on the computer. I'll be right back. Okay, yep, 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 I got it. Okay, right. Um, the combined score is a 8.25. There you go. Um, I've been turned into a cat. It must have been that sorceress, Philip. I'm sorry, Philip. I'm sorry. I'll like your next game. Eken is going to be a great game. I'll look out for that one coming from uh, Morning Players. Yes, Eken. <laughs> Until next time, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you want to help out with this show, um, you can go to my Patreon, Board Games Everybody Should, dot, dot, dot. Um, no, 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 yeah, it's not dot, 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 but anywho. Or you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com. Yes, I'm talking to you. You. Okay, um, and um, I'll see you next time with another review. And remember, you don't have to buy every single board game out there. Just own a few good ones because uh, you don't have that much money. I don't have a lot of money either. So there you go. Ciao for now. Bye. Now I'm going to change back into a... Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good? I got some board games.